All right, let's learn a few open position chords. Right now we're going to learn the chords G, C, and D. And these are called open position chords because they're occurring down here. And uh, with these three chords, we're going to be using just the first three frets. And we're also going to be using some open strings as well. All right, so let's take a look at this G chord here. In order to finger this chord, first, let's start with the second finger, which is going to go on the third fret of the sixth string, the low string. Then we're going to have the first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, followed by open for the fourth string, open on the third string, We're going to press down the 3rd fret of the 2nd string with our 3rd finger. And finally, we're going to press down the 3rd fret of the 1st string with our pinky, or 4th finger. So all of that together is going to sound like this. So when we're talking about this chord and making sure it sounds out correctly, you want to make sure that your finger positioning is correct. If you look at what I'm doing right here, this is pretty much everything wrong that you could do all at once. I've got my thumb wrapped around. I've got my fingers flattened out. I have no space between the palm and the neck of the guitar. So you got to avoid that because what will happen is you could actually have your fingers in the right place and even pressing down on the frets correctly but some of the other fingers that are not involved with, say, uh, one of the strings you're trying to get to sound will actually be affecting it and blocking it, and you won't hear it. Here's an example of that. Let's say I have the third fret on the sixth string. I've got that sounding great. Now let's go to the next string. That string isn't sounding even though I'm pressing it down with my first finger. If I get my hand into proper positioning, now I can hear that. So what you want to do every time you're making one of these chords, whether it's the G chord or one of the other two we're going to check out in this particular video, when you get your fingers in position, you want to go through each string individually and make sure they're all sounding correctly. Now since all of those came out clearly, then you can strum the whole chord and hear how it's supposed to sound. Another thing you need to look out for is where you're pressing down in the fret. And we talked about this in the video uh, where we were pressing down one fret at a time. It becomes even more important with these chords. And you're going to have to uh, manage your way through this, you're not going to always be able to get the optimum positioning in each fret, but you want to get as close as you can, as I said earlier, to the upper two-thirds of the fret, which would be closer this way as opposed to this way. So this would be the upper two-third, lower two-third, and halfway. So the rule of thumb that I have when you're making a chord, you want to try to at least get to the middle or halfway uh, up the fret in order to get a good sound. Check this out. If I press these frets down, but everything is kind of slid back a little bit, you start to get a lot of buzzing, and you don't get a clear sound. If I take that same pressure that I'm using right now and just slide everything into position, I get a good sound. So you got to check out all of these things. Is your hand positioning correct? And also, are you pressing down in the correct part of the fret um, if you're starting to run into any trouble with these chords? So far, we've just used the G chord as an example. Let's add another one. This is going to be the C chord. It's going to sound like this. 
Now, first of all, before we even get into which frets we're going to press down in the fingering, this is a chord that you got to look out for because with your right hand, you're not going to strum all six of the strings. With this particular chord, you're going to skip the low string, the low E, or the sixth string. So when you strum with your right hand, start with the fifth string and go all the way down. Let's look at the fingering now. I've got my third finger on the third fret of the fifth string, which is going to sound like this. I've got my second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. I have the third string open. I've got my first finger on the first fret of the second string. And finally, we're going to have the first string open. Once you get your fingers into place, let's do the same procedure that we did with the G chord. Let's pluck each string individually and make sure they're coming out clear. That one's coming out good. Now let's do a full strum. So that's your C chord. Now that we know two chords, it would be great for you to get used to switching. This is going to be a little bit tricky at first, but you want to start working your fingers into shape, playing G, and then switch to C. In terms of my finger movement, this is ideally where you want to get as you get more advanced. You notice all of my fingers are moving simultaneously. I play this G chord. When I switch to C, you notice all my fingers move into place at the same time. However, when you first get started and you're still trying to remember where all the fingers go, it's not the end of the world if you don't have them all moving simultaneously. You can use the concept of what's called an anchor finger, and you can start with that to help get your fingers into place. So what you can do is take whichever finger is going to be closest to you and press that down first. So for instance, with G, I'm going to put my middle finger down on the third fret of the sixth string and then do each finger after that. Followed by with C, put the third finger down first on the third fret of the fifth string, followed by your second finger and your first finger. So that can be a good way to get yourself switching. And eventually, as I said before, you want to try to get to where they're moving together. G, C. So we've got one more chord we're going to do in this video, and that's the chord D. It's going to sound like this. This chord is similar to C in that we're going to skip and not use all of the strings. Remember with C, we skip the sixth string. With D, we're going to skip not only the sixth string, but also the fifth. So we shouldn't be hearing either of those sounds when we play the D chord. We should just hear the top four strings. Let's get our positioning together on this chord. We're going to have fourth string open. We're going to use our first finger on the second fret of the third string. We're going to have our third finger on the third fret of the second string. And we're going to have our second finger on the second fret of the first string. So now let's play each one individually. Make sure they're sounding out nice and full. All right, that sounds great. If you're not getting that sound, make sure you check your positioning. 
Make sure your fingers are coming in using the fingertips. Make sure you have a nice arch. You're using your thumb. Once you do all those things, you should be getting a sound like that. Now that we have three chords, you can do a lot with those. You could go use them each in order. You could go G, C, and then D, and then back to G. That would be a great exercise, just going between these. And let me give you one final tip in terms of switching. Now I mentioned before the anchor finger uh, strategy and how you want to slowly move towards being able to move all of the fingers simultaneously. Another thing you want to do is look for common tones and common fingers in between the chords. So a perfect example of this is with D and G. Say you're doing this progression I was playing right now, which was the chords G, C, D, and then going back to G. If you notice, on the D chord, I'm pressing down on the third fret of the second string with my third finger. You're actually going to be pressing down on that same note with the same finger for the G chord. So rather than doing a full reset when you uh, switch between these chords, you can leave that finger down and that's one less thing for you to do and will help you get to that chord faster. So when I say a full reset, I'll see a lot of students often play a chord and then when they get ready to play the next one, they do this kind of thing where they take their hand off and then go to address the next chord. Rather than doing that, leave that finger down and that's gonna help you get there faster like this. D, pick up the first and, sec uh, first and second finger but leave the third down and that's going to help you switch that much faster. So I would also suggest just switch between G and D for a while and get used to leaving that third finger down. So definitely keep in mind the strategies in this video and really take them to heart. And if you do, they're going to help you as you move forward in getting nice transitions between your chords.